And now, a five-minute update on the peaceful evolution happening around the globe. I'm Agent Derek J. You're listening to Free Agents Radio News. Today is Friday, March 16th, 2012. Top story today. Study finds that individuals are much more likely to outsource violence. But first, a message that's important for all of us. Agents of the state are threatening your freedom. Become a free agent and take it back. Google FR33 to get connected with other men and women around the globe who are united against state aggression and who are committed to not violent revolution, but peaceful evolution. It costs nothing to rally others to your causes by starting websites, creating and joining groups, and more. Stay up to date on the global movement for liberty by reading, watching, and listening to reports from our growing network of free agents. Free agents who work to achieve a free society can receive points for various activities, which can be redeemed for gear, such as clothing, cameras, and more. You can directly invest in the projects you care about right now so that free agents can get the valuable support they need. States are going to fail, so get off the sidelines and join other free agents on the front lines of freedom today by visiting fr33agents.com. That's fr33agents.com. Now for the news. io9.com's Sam McDougall reports on some new research that should give us hope that people are actually peacefully evolving. Quote, A runaway trolley is about to run over and kill five people, but a bystander who is standing on the footbridge can shove a man in front of the train, saving the five people but killing the man. Is it permissible to shove the man? Across cultures, genders, ages, and races, the result is essentially the same and has been replicated countless times. Over 90% of the respondents consider this act impermissible. People just don't want to have to do the pushing themselves. When a lever is added to the problem and the person questioned can now drop the bystander onto the tracks without physically touching him, the result is flipped and 95% of the people find it permissible. It makes sense that this is how basic human morality evolved. Our species didn't evolve with any long-range weapons or fancy bystander-killing levers. Decisions about violence were always made face-to-face. And because our species thrived from cooperation, it's no wonder that we're programmed to avoid directly harming others. Of course, humans commit violence all of the time, but the fact that we take it so seriously shows how much of a psychological transgression we find it must be. Violence is, and always will be, extreme. When banal or novel actions lack motoric and perceptual properties associated with them, they may fail to trigger an aversive response. Signing one's name to a torture order or pressing the button that releases a bomb each have real, known consequences for other people. But as actions, they lack salient properties reliably associated with victim distress. A notable parallel is evident in moral judgment. People consider it morally worse to cause harm through direct physical engagement than at a distance. Unquote. And now, Agent Rapture reports from Free Keen in the Shire. In early February, Kelly Voluntarios and Dirk G. Freeman shipped down to Manchester Airport to do some TSA outreach. Most of the workers refrained from commenting on the TSA, and based on my observation, at least two of them were in favor of Derek and Kelly's effort. One worker claims that he has no problem with the TSA, just as long as they are keeping him and others safe. Kelly put into the test when she asked the worker if there's ever been a single incident of the TSA actually catching a terrorist. He claims the TSA finds people weekly. When Derek inquires as to where this source exists, the man uncomfortably says the internet. Upon being challenged further, he awkwardly ducks out of the situation. I actually felt kind of bad for the guy at the time, but upon further reflection, I came to the conclusion that people want to hold on to these faceless notions, and they should have to defend such positions, rather than blindly assume those in charge know what's best for them without questioning the logical basis of what such actions entail. Derek also gets in a good discussion with a man who has a difficult time understanding his satirical approach to the PSA. No matter how many hints Derek and Kelly seem to give him, he can't seem to catch on. Who can blame him? The actions of the TSA and the state in general are already so ludicrous. They're already less than grandmas, little kids, in conjunction with microwave mood screening. So it's really that far-fetched for the TSA to come up with a policy that forces everyone to strip down to their underwear for the sake of security theater. Not really that job. Throughout the outreach, several people had their pictures taken with both Kelly and Derek. One guy actually recognizes Kelly from YouTube and thanks her, while another guy who's an airport employee can't seem to get enough pictures of Kelly as he follows her around the airport randomly taking her pictures. Thank you again, Derek J. Freeman and Kelly Voluntary, for standing up to the TSA and stripping down an effort to inform and wake people up so perhaps one day our non-negotiable natural born rights will no longer be stripped away. For pictures, videos, and more on these stories, visit this episode's page at fr33agents.com slash farn 2012 This has been Free Agents Radio News. Subscribe to this podcast and check back tomorrow for more updates on the growing peaceful evolution happening around the globe. For fr33agents.com, this is Agent Derek J. reminding you that good people disobey bad laws.